Alyssa Jean's reviews and this is my review for House of the Dragon season one particularly the second half of season one as I already did a review on the first half of the season episodes one through five so this is more focused on episodes six through ten but at the end of that I will give my overall rating out of ten for the season as a whole uh, and then after that, I'm going to do a predictions review because I did do predictions halfway through the season for the second half of the season. And uh, we're going to talk about how I did on them. I made seven predictions. Let's see how many I got correct. Uh, and originally when I did those predictions, it was in a spoiler section. It was for people who have read the books only because uh, I was going to be talking about things that had happened in the book that had not yet happened in the show. Now, however, all of you are welcome to see what my predictions were uh, because all of that stuff has either already happened or didn't happen because I got it wrong, but it, the ship has sailed on it and like it's not going to happen later. Like all the stuff um, that, that I predicted... Um, it's, it, we're past it. So you won't be spoiled if you hadn't read the book. Um, so everyone is, is welcome to join me for my predictions review and the latter half of this video. But first, let me talk about what I thought of the second half of the season. Okay, I want to start by talking about a couple of the concerns that I had after episode five and then actually after episode six too. I, I'm doing, you know, those weekly live discussions over on Enchantment of, of Eternity with my brother Mark uh, and Darren, sometimes Don Willie. Uh, and uh, in the episode six discussion, I also mentioned something that I was a little iffy about. <laughs> Were they going to be able to pull it off? Um, so I'll talk about that too. And I'll talk about how I think they did with those things. And then I want to dive into episodes nine and ten in particular because um, that's really the climax of the season. Um, so let's talk about the big time jump. So the last time I did a video, it was after episode five. They hadn't done the big time jump with the change of actors, the 10-year time jump and a change of actors for Alicent and Rhaenyra. And uh, so like a lot of people, I was a little like, how are they, is, how's this going to go? I think if I recall correctly, I was fairly optimistic that they would be able to pull it off. Um, and when episode six starts and it opens up with Rhaenyra now played by Emma Darcy uh, in labor, um, for, a, for a hot second, I was like, I don't know, is this the same character? I don't know, but... Just almost immediately, um, Emma Darcy drew me into the character, and by the time uh, Rhaenyra walks up those stairs, I'm I'm into it. I'm hooked. This is Rhaenyra now, um, and then by the time we get to the end of episode ten, this is Rhaenyra. Emma Darcy like crushed it, um, and in fact, Emma Darcy as well as uh, Olivia Cook, who plays Alicent were cast first and then they went back and cast the younger actors because those these are the actors who are going to be here for the rest of the show <laughs> like people were all like into um millie Tilk. what's her name Til i always forget her name the, the the actress who played the first uh the younger version of rhaenyra people were really like kind of dreading losing her but you gotta remember like she's basically like cast to play the younger version of a character who's going to be older for the vast majority of the show is going to be played by emma darcy for the vast majority of the show so it's kind of like casting like the young Ned Stark <laughs> at the end of, of Game of Thrones. Not that I want to remind you of those crappy last two seasons, but it's a character who's mostly going to be older, and they're casting the younger characters after that, or the younger actors, rather, after that. Um, so Emma Darcy is a great Rhaenyra, and Olivia Cook really crushing it as... Allison too. Now with both these characters, they're kind of softening them for the show compared to how they were 
in the books, but I'll get to that a little bit more um, when I get into episodes nine and ten. Um, but I kind of, I kind of love it. I, I, by the time we got into episode seven, you know, I'm totally, totally on board with these two actresses. Time jump was fine. People were worried about it. It was fine. However, the other thing I was a little concerned about, after episode six, I'm looking at where that episode ended, and I'm thinking of the prediction that I made, which we'll, we'll talk about. I ended up getting it correct, of where the season would end. And I'm like, whoa, we've got a long way <laughs> to go to get from there to here. It's been a long road to get from there to here. Like, it was a long road to get from there to here. And I was like, how are they going to do this without... It seemed like they're rushing it. Uh, and just like jumping through time and skipping over character development. And overall, it lands with me. I think it worked. But in retrospect, I think this show would have been better if they weren't obsessed with having an even 50-50 split of the young act actresses and the older actresses. Um, I think that they should have had the big time jump after episode four. And they should have um, condensed everything in the first five episodes into four episodes, which would have allowed us to have more time with the children, get more time to know Aegon and Aemond, more time to get to know Jason Luke, and frankly, Harwin Strong. We needed more time with him. Uh, Lena, she had a big scene at the end of episode six, would have liked a little more time uh, with her. I think that all should have began in episode five, um, to give us more time to get with the characters who are, frankly, more important. These children, quote-unquote children, Aemon, Aegon, Lucerus, Jaceris, um, this is the generation that is going to be fighting the war. Um, some of them will, will be <laughs> around for a while. Some won't. We already lost one at, <laughs> at the end of episode 10. Um, but um, that's the generation we should really be focusing on. Um, so I think think we needed one more episode with them um, in retrospect and I think I think you could have condensed the first five into four because there was there's a lot of there's stuff you could have cut out of that which I'm not going to get into right now because I already did my one through five review um, this is retrospectively looking back I think they could have done better but overall it was still okay I still they still landed it uh, they they still uh, presented it in a way uh, where you buy all of these characters. You buy that the uh, acting actors changes are the same characters. A lot of people were complaining about the the different Aegon <laughs> that uh, older Aegon looks too young. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I think he's fine. I, I think he he looks how old he's he's supposed to look. Um, so I don't have any huge issue with with that. Um, so um, overall, I think they did good. But it would have been better if we got a, another episode. Uh, with the time jump. Now let's let's get into the the final two episodes. We had the Green Council and the Black Queen. Now I had seen the titles a while back, and uh, so I knew what the final two episodes were going to be about. I got a prediction correct about that too. I'll get into that a little bit later. But um, yeah, I knew that that's what we were going for. I would say one of the episodes was really satisfying to me, and one was not. Um, and the one that was not was episode nine. And I talked about this a bit with Mark and Don Willie when we did our live discussion um, that I expected more tension, more of the political drama. I wanted them to be in that uh, council room for most of the episode or at least a large portion of the episode. Um, and I didn't want all this time spent on Star Trek three, the search for Aegon. Like, and I still think that. Uh, and then now that I've seen episode 10, I watch episode 10 and see what they did with Rhaenyra and the tension created there. And I was like, that, that is what they should have done with the greens in episode nine that they did not do because they were wasting time on this futile chase to see who can get to Aegon first, Otto or Allison, Otto's people or Allison's people. Who's going to get there first? Who cares? Aegon is going to do whatever he wants to do. <laughs> Allison is not going to have any influence on him at the end of the day. And I'm not saying that as a book reader 
who knows what's going to happen. I'm just saying that um, Aegon, um, you can see just by watching the show when he's getting uh, this rush of power and he's like standing on the stage like, yeah, I'm the king. Like, he's going to listen to his mom? Really? Come on. Like, I don't think it's ultimately going to mean a thing that, that Alicent got to Aegon first. Um, I guess... I guess we're to believe that that's the reason why Alicent gets to send Otto off um, to treat with Rhaenyra rather than them just trying to murder <laughs> her. Um, that's 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 the prize for getting to Aeon first, but I don't know. I don't think we needed it. I think you could have just had simply had the, the, the scene where Otto tries to treat with Rhaenyra. Like, I don't think you needed that. I think... There should have been more tension, more time spent. Uh, you could have had this is such a great opportunity to have to explore that conflict between Otto and Alicent. Um, not for a race to who gets Aegon first, but just in that council room. That's what I really would have liked to see. Uh, so as I mentioned before, they really have softened Alicent a little bit. Uh, whereas in the book, I kind of read her as just full-on evil and she was the one who was behind the planning for Aegon and whereas here she's surprised that, that the small council was planning behind her back um so they really softened her a bit but I think they could have really used that to have more tension in that council room and I, I uh, they failed on that um but I still like that episode overall but when I saw the finale, I was like, this is what I wanted to see in the Green Council. This was them doing it correctly. I fucking love this finale. It was a phenomenal finale. It's definitely going to have an, <coughs> an influence on my rating, which I'll get to uh, in a couple minutes. Um, absolutely phenomenal. This was the tension I wanted to see. And we do get that tension between Rhaenyra and Damon. And they also have softened Rhaenyra a bit uh, because... In the book, she is full on, no, we're going to go fucking war. And uh, in the book, it's not Otto who goes to the bridge. It's just uh, Grandmaster Orwell. And uh, she she has this line where she's like, so do you remember who Viserys named as his heir? <laughs> uh, and, he, and Orwell was like, you. And she's like, so you admit you're a traitor then because I'm the heir. Bitch, and <laughs> like, and she's much harsher. Uh, so just like Alicent, the show softens her uh, a bit. Um, but you know what? This really works for me, both with Alicent and Rhaenyra, because it humanizes them. Um, it shows that um, there are reluctant parties in this war uh, that is about to occur. I really actually love it a lot uh, that they did this. And it really, in the show, it's what drives uh, Rhaenys to go to her side because she um, points out the Corlys. Rhaenyra is the only one showing a bit of restraint at all. <laughs> and that was a positive, and I think that's what ultimately can uh, convince Corlys to join her. Uh, so I love that. I, I love that they made that change uh, for the show. I think that works super well. I think humanizing these characters works really well too they also humanize another character but i'll save that for my uh, predictions review section because it ties into one of the predictions i made so i'll get to that a little bit later so um let me go ahead and give my rating out of 10 for the season and then we can move on over to my predictions review so let me give my rating one would be the lowest possible score 10 would be the highest possible score. And my rating for House of the Dragon Season 1 is a 10. It's the finale that put it over the top. Now, get the phrase perfect 10 out of your mind. I, I hate it when people associate 10 with perfect, especially when it comes to my ratings. There's never been a perfect show. <laughs> if, if I was looking for perfection, I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't give tens to anything. Um, as I said, I do have some critiques. I think that they could have um, maybe cut off the time jump at episode four instead of episode five um, and spent more time with the kids. There's And as I said, the episode nine, not quite what I was looking for. However, despite that, 
Uh, this show was phenomenal. Uh, this was a show that I was looking forward to every week. I couldn't wait till 6 o'clock. I would try to make sure I get my dinner made before then so I could sit down right at 6 and turn on my HBO Max. Uh, and then I listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos. I do my own live stream with my brother do, and just like process and talk about it. I get really excited. I haven't gotten excited about a show like this probably since Game of Thrones before the horrible season seven and eight. Um, so it felt really good to get really excited about a show uh, that was well written overall, amazingly acted all across the board. And and most of the choices that they made from book to show were phenomenal. Um, as I said, there's, there's some things they could, have, they could have done better, but I would say the majority of them were really, really smart choices. Uh, and it's a phenomenal show. Loved it. So it is a 10 out of 10, which puts it right now as my favorite show of 2022. We'll see if it holds on to that spot. Uh, I'll do my top 10 uh, favorite shows of the year in December. I am not seeing what's on the horizon that could possibly usurp it. <laughs> um, sure as hell is it going to be Andor. Like, I'm enjoying Andor, but pff, that's not going to overtake House of the Dragon. The first three episodes of Star Wars Andor already disqualify it from that. Um, but, yeah, so it could end up being my favorite show of the year. Right now, it is. And it is a 10 out of 10. Now, let's go ahead and move on to my predictions review, where I let you know how I did. Predictions review. Predictions review. Predictions review. So let's start with the first prediction I made, which was Viserys' death would happen at the very end of episode 8. That is correct. Now, to be fair, this was kind of an easy one. I mean, if you knew the book, it made the most sense that the entirety of Episode 9 would be the Green Council, which means Viserys' death would have to come at the end of Episode 8. Though there, I, well, there was some discourse that perhaps it would happen in Episode 9, because Episode 9s are usually the big ones. So maybe Viserys' death would happen then. Uh, but no, it was in 8. So this prediction was the when of his death, and my next prediction was the how of his death. So my second prediction was that Alicent will poison Viserys. <laughs> Now, to be clear, in the book, it states that Viserys just died in his sleep. However, there was speculation that perhaps Alicent might have poisoned him. So I predicted that the show would definitively tell us that Alicent poisoned him. And they definitely didn't definitively tell us anything. And it looks to me like it's possible someone may have poisoned him. We had both Beesberry and Damon bring that up. In fact, Damon does directly accuse Alicent of it, but Damon didn't watch episode 9. The way that they portray Alicent in episode 9 very clearly shows that she does not want to murder anybody. She doesn't want to hurt anyone. She's trying to do this as peacefully as possible. You know, she's trying to usurp the throne as peacefully as possible, but she genuinely does not want to murder anyone. Now, could have Otto perhaps done it? Could have Lara Strong done it without Allison's knowledge? Absolutely. In fact, I think that second one is probably pretty likely, but I don't know if the show is ever going to reveal that or not. Um, but if they revealed that Allison was responsible for it, then that would have undercut all the character development that, that they have gone out of their way to give us. They've really gone out of their way to show us that Alicent is not a murderer, so it wouldn't make sense to later reveal that she poisoned Viserys, though perhaps it was somebody else. Moving on to my third prediction, there would be no Rhaenyra in episode 9 and no Alicent in episode 10. Not gonna lie, I really didn't expect to get this one right. I didn't know that the show would have the balls to hold Rhaenyra and Damon out of an entire episode, um, but 
I'm glad they did. I made this prediction because that is what I would do if I were the writer. I thought this made the most sense. And I know that there were some people, mostly people who hadn't read the books, who were disappointed to not see Rhaenyra or Damon for a whole episode. But I, there's no other way they could do it. So especially in the book, it's like 10 days uh, before uh, Rhaenyra ever finds out. Here it's only one or two days, but still you have to have Rhaenyra finding out after episode nine occurs. There's no other way you can really do it to make it work. And you're gonna have Rhaenyra in episode nine then just kind of, you know, sitting there in Dragonstone not knowing what is happening? No, 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 you can't do that. No, 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 no. So they did this absolutely perfectly. And Allison didn't belong in episode 10 either, so I'm very, very happy that I got this one right because I think this was the absolute way to go. Moving on to my fourth prediction that there would be parallels to Emma from the first episode in episode 10. Uh <laughs> I'm gonna have to call this one incorrect. It's kind of a dumb prediction in retrospect because it's sort of subjective. Like, what do you mean by there's parallels to Emma? But I went back and listened to exactly what I said in my prediction and based on what I said, there's no way I can count this correct. I was of course referring to uh, Rhaenyra's uh, pregnancy because that is a thing that happened in the book where she is stressed out and goes into early labor and loses the baby so i thought that they were going to really directly tie it into uh, episode one i thought they would even allude to that but what i did not anticipate was episode six because i made this prediction after episode five they really got more into the parallels to emma's uh, childbirth scene in episode one in episode six, they bookended that episode with childbirth scenes. They sure love doing childbirth scenes in this show, uh, but particularly the uh, Lena scene at the end of episode six really paralleled Emma much more because it was the exact same situation, but Damon doesn't make the choice that Viserys made. So I, I don't see that here, so I'm gonna call it wrong. Um, by the way, I do want to just mention um, that on the show, the stillborn baby does not have scales or a dragon tail as it's described in the book. I don't consider that a change. I consider that uh, there was an unreliable narrator in the book. That was like how the history had gone down. That's what people said. I think that was an urban legend. I think that was a myth. I don't think that really happened. And I think that's why the show did it that way. Anyway, that's kind of besides the point. Let me go ahead and move on to my fifth prediction. So my fifth prediction was that Aemon would kill Lucerys in episode 10. And actually I said specifically at the very, very end of episode 10. That is correct. I could not have imagined a better way to end the season than this. Now remember, I made this after episode 5, so at the time I made the prediction, I said, it is so weird making a prediction about two characters who have not even been born yet on the show, but I knew somehow they would have to get here. Now there's actually a second part of this prediction that I left off of this predictions review because it's a little spoilery I said that this other thing that happens after this in the book would not happen until season two and it has not happened yet so uh, I was correct there as well I said this would be the very end of the season finale and I was absolutely correct there and I also have to say that it the way they pulled it off was phenomenal. This far exceeded my expectations. It was just so creepy the way Luke was flying around in the storm and he couldn't see anything and all of a sudden this big giant Vagar is just lurking over him. It was so good, so good. This is also um, the other character I was referring to earlier that was more humanized in Aemond, where in the book Aemond was straight up trying to kill Lucerius, whereas here it looks like he was just kind of fucking with him more and he has this look on his face like, oh fuck, what have I done? So it'll be really interesting to see what they do with him moving forward. Will they have him return to King's Landing?
the way he does in the book and goes, yeah, I fucking killed him. Or will he regret it a little more? Allison obviously is not going to be very happy about it. So uh, we'll see how they do it uh, in season two. But as far as the end of season one, I absolutely nailed this one. And my sixth prediction was that the season would end with a Rhaenyra Targaryen narration, much the way that it started with a Rhaenyra narration. I'm okay with getting this one wrong because I think the way that they did it was much better. <laughs> Uh, the way they just have Rhaenyra turn and face the fire and like they just focus in on her hair is shaking up and down and it, it looks really weird and then she turns around and just has that look of simultaneous anger and sadness and it's on. So that part of the prediction I did get right. I did say that by the end of this the audience would be feeling like yeah it is on the dance of dragons is on and we still got that feeling but i actually think they we got it in a much better way it was much more powerful to just have the facial expressions of rainier rather than some cheesy narration so i am glad actually that i got this one wrong and my final prediction was that we would get a mushroom cameo before the end of the season <laughs> Now, I went on to clarify that it would be a confirmed mushroom cameo because there was a dwarf that appeared in earlier episodes. I think he was in Flea Bottom, and then again, he was playing the drums at Rhaenyra's wedding, and people were saying that's mushroom. I don't count that. I meant like Rhaenyra would go, hey, mushroom, come over here, or, or that something would make it very clear that it was mushroom. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, if you haven't read the book, mushroom is the court jester and a dwarf, and he is a character in the book who has not officially appeared on the show unless you count that dwarf playing the drums. And in the book, he is one of the sources that our historian uses. So the book is written from the perspective of the Archmaester uh, who is looking back at history. And uh, for this time period, he uses three different sources. There's Sefton Eustace, there's um, Maester Munchkin, I think his name is, or Munkakin or something, and uh, Mushroom, who was the court jester. And he was in Dragonstone with Rhaenyra. Uh, and he would go on to write his book, of his tell-all book about the Dance of the Dragons event. And uh, Mushroom always uh, had the most raunchy version, the most violent version. <laughs> uh, so it was always fun to, to see his perspective. And I never thought that he was going to be a big character in the show. But I thought maybe, just maybe, they would do a little nod to the book readers and have Mushroom just show up and confirm that it actually is him. But no, uh, he probably just isn't going to be in the show at all. And so my final score is 3 out of 7 correct. Could have been better, but not too bad. And that does it for my Season 1 review and predictions review. Please join me later this week as I release my book club book spoilers video on House of the Dragon. Take a look at what's happening in the future. Please subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you next time.